Hello. Welcome to your first lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to give you an introduction to computers. Nowadays, the computer plays an essential role in our day-to-day -day lives. A computer makes our day-to-day -day tasks easier and faster. Computers can be seen in banks, shops, schools, hospitals, railway stations, and many more places, including our own home. As they are such an essential part of our lives, we must have a basic idea about computers in general introduction. So, in this lesson, I'm going to give you an introduction to these computers. So, first, let's see what is a computer. A computer is a machine that can calculate. However, a computer is programmable electronic machine used to store, retrieve, and process data. Basically, a computer is an electronic device that can manipulate information or data. It has the ability to store, retrieve, and process data. You may already know that you can use computers to type documents, send emails, play games, and browse the internet. Next, I'm going to talk about some significant features of a computer. The first feature I'm going to talk about is its higher speed. Computers are much faster to perform mathematical calculations than humans. Basically, this means that while it takes some time for humans to do a small calculation, a computer can do millions of additions, subtractions, multiplications, and divisions in the same amount of time. The clock speed of a computer is usually me measured in megahertz or gigahertz. One megahertz is equal to one million ticks per second. And one gigahertz equals to one billion ticks per second. You can use clock speed as a rough measurement of, rough measurement of how fast a computer is. The speed of a computer depends on computer hardware parts such as microprocessor, RAM and storage unit. I will be talking to you about these hardware parts about in later in the lesson. The next feature I'm going to talk about is the higher accuracy. Accuracy is an important feature of computers. Any types of task or calculation by a computer is correct. The computer is programmed in such a way that computers can never make a mistake. Today, this is the reason that people rely on computer accuracy and computers are being used everywhere because of this reason. Moving on to the next feature, I'm going to talk about the higher efficiency. Efficiency is the ratio of useful work to resources expended. In other words, the ratio of the output to the input of a given system. So basically, the ability to produce something with a minimum amount of effort. The next feature I'm going to talk about is the versatility of a computer. Versatility is a char characteristic of a computer. The this is the capacity to perform completely different type of work simultaneously, such as playing videos, downloading, running the internet, and so on and so the computer is capable of doing all these instructions because of this feature. The computer, because of this feature, today computers are being used almost everywhere, like 
schools, colleges, hospitals, offices, railway stations, hotels, and etc. The next topic, the next feature is the ability to keep in memory. Power of remembering is also very special, a very special characteristic of a computer. You can store many types of information and data on your computer in very large quantities. Whenever you need this data in the future, you can get those data in a few seconds. This is called the feature of keeping memory. So next, I'm going to talk about the next feature is the, that computer has no feelings. In computers, like humans, there's no feelings or any kind of emotions. No, does the computer have any kind of knowledge or experience? Because a computer is a machine which works continuously on the instructions of humans. Next, the final feature I'm going to talk about is the computer has no intelligence. A computer system is completely dependent on us humans on how to work. Until a user gives any kind of an instruction, it cannot do any work. To and only after completing giving the instruction, a computer can complete its work. Next, I'm going to talk about the main components of a computer. In a computer, there are, there are four main components. Those are input devices, output devices, the central processing unit, which is the CPU, and the backing storage. First, let's talk about input devices. Input devices are used to input data to the computer. Common input devices are the keyboard and the mouse. Let's talk about some input devices. First, the keyboard. In this picture, you can see a simple layout of a computer. Sorry, a computer keyboard. The keyboard. The typing keys layout is known as the QWERTY for the first six letters in the layout. Common control keys are form, end, insert, delete, page up, page down, control and control, alt and escape. Then you can see a mouse here in the picture. The mouse is a pointing device. And here you can see an, the other input device is the trackball, which is very similar to the mouse, which is also a pointing device. Then here you can see a lightning pen, which is also another pointing device. And then the fifth one is a joystick, which is being used to play when we play games, video games. Uh, and then you can see microphones, which is being used to get an in audio input to the computer. And you can see a digital camera in the seventh picture and a scanner. Here you can see a scanner, which is being used to uh, get a soft copy of a hard copy. And then uh, you, we have a barcode reader which you can see uh, in supermarkets and grocery stores. Okay, and then let's move on to the second main component, which is the output devices. Output devices are used to obtain outputs from a computer. The first output device I'm going to talk about is the monitor. The most common types of monitors are CRT and LCD. CRT is, means cathode ray tube. LCD means liquid crystal display. 
So in, in the present, you can see most of the monitors are LCD. Here we can see a few more output devices, which are printer, speaker, like that. And now I'm going to talk about the ports. The ports are in the back of the CPU. You can see ports in the back of a CPU. Uh, we, we have two types of ports in a computer, which are male ports and female ports. In the male port, you can see pins, and the female ports, you can see holes. And here in this picture, you can see uh, the main kind, main ports you can see in the back of the CPU. The next main component we are going to talk about is the central processing unit, which is the CPU. The CPU consists two parts which are the processor and the memory unit. In the processor, there is CU and the ALU. CU is control unit and the ALU is arithmetic and logic unit. In the memory, memory unit is the, there's the main memory, which is the primary storage. First, I'm going to talk about the ALU, which is the arithmetic and logic unit. ALU performs operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, divisions on data. It also performs logical operations which involves comparison of data. Then moving on to the next part, the control unit, the CU. CU controls and directs the operations of the entire computer system. It obtains instructions from the program stored in the main memory. Then let's talk about the processor. So as you saw in the picture before, the processor is a combination of the ALU and the CU. The ALU is the arithmetic and logical unit and the CU is the control unit. So, uh, the I have given some types of processors in here, which are Intel, AMD, IBM, Motorola, and Cybex. Then, let's talk about the fourth main component of a computer, which is the memory. The main memory consists the RAM and the ROM. The RAM is the random access memory. The ROM is the read-only memory. And then we have the cache memory. Let's talk about the random access memory. Uh, you can see in this picture, this is a picture of a RAM. Okay, and here. RAM is the computer's short-term memory. It is the main memory of a computer. RAM is called the main memory of a computer. And it is the computer's short-term memory that temporarily holds data and instructions, which will be needed shortly by the CPU. RAM is volatile, which means it that it loses its data when the computer power is turned off. We have uh, RAMs in various capacities, such as 64 MB, 128 MB, 256 MB, 512 MB, 1 GB, 2 GB, and more. There are two types of RAM, static RAM and dynamic RAM. Uh, we can call them as SRAM and DRAM as well. Moving on, let's talk about the read-only memory, which is the ROM. Here you can see in this picture, this is a picture of a ROM. A ROM is the type of data storage device which is manufactured with fixed content. A firmware is a combination of software and hardware. So the ROM is a firmware. And also ROM is non-volatile. 
from is non-volatile, which means that it does not lose its data when the computer power is turned off. So the ROM is non-volatile storage and because of that reason, it contains critical programs such as the programs that boots the computer. There are three types of ROMs. PROM, which is the programmable read-only memory. EPROM, which is erasable programmable read-only memory. And EEPROM, which is the electrically erasable programmable read-only memory. Then let's talk about the cache memory. Here in this picture, you can see there are three types of cache memory, level one, level two, and level three. As you can see, the level one cache memory is in the inside of the CPU and level two and level three cache memories are in the motherboard. Cache memory is computer's short-term memory that temporarily holds data and instructions which will be needed shortly by the CPU. Data and instructions can be retrieved from cache memory very speedily. Uh, as I told you before, we have three types of cache memory, which are primary cache memory, level one, secondary cache memory, level two, and tertiary cache memory, which is the level three. Let's see the difference between the primary cache memory and the secondary cache memory. The primary cache memory is situated on the CPU, while the secondary cache memory is situated on the motherboard. The primary cache memory has a low capacity, while the secondary cache memory has a high capacity. The data in the primary cache memory is being read first, while the data in the secondary cache memory is being read secondary. And the last one is the primary cache memory has a high, high speed compared to the secondary cache memory, which, is, which has a low speed. Let's talk about the secondary memory. We call the secondary memory the backing storage, external storage, and auxiliary storage as well. This is being used to store a large volume of information permanently. So unlike the RAM, we use this secondary memory to store a large volume of information permanently. They can use as input and output devices. Some examples for secondary memories are hard disk drive, floppy disk, chip disk and dash disk, pen drive, flash disk, optical storage devices, and magnetic tapes. So, we talked about the four main components of a computer. So what these compute, what are, what are the use of these components? What do they do? Let's talk about that. Whatever is given to the computer as input is called data while the output received after processing is called information. Here you can see the basic architecture of a computer. In here, you can see the main four components, which are input, backing storage, output, and the CPU. By the red dotted lines, you can see the signal flow, the green, arrows shows the data and inform information flow while the purple arrow shows the instruction flow. As you can see, the control units gives signal flows to all the other components. The input devices, output devices and the backing storage devices are called the peripheral devices. The input devices, output devices, and the backing storage devices are being called the peripheral devices. So this is the 
basic computer architecture as you can see now uh, we have come to the end of our lesson so thank you Thank <music> you.